Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well and welcome to what promises to be an absolutely brilliant and way over the top violent naval battle. Today we've got predicted 2025 Chinese carrier group versus predicted 2025 Russian carrier group. Now in 2025 China is definitely going to have their carrier group. In terms of Russia, the only problem is I'm not actually sure if they're going to be going ahead with their predicted 2025 refit of the Kuznetsov. They were obviously planning to do it. But now the war in Ukraine, I have no idea if they're going to go ahead with it or not. But let's just assume that they are because obviously we want to battle and we'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. Now, this is going to be an extremely complicated battle with lots of information to show you and lots of new technology for you guys to get your teeth into. So please get a coffee, sit tight. I'm going to go very quickly. So, the contents of this video. One, addressing viewer feedback. Two, we're going to go over the details of the battle and the vehicles involved. Three, we're going to do a technology demonstrator. Four, we're going to make our human predictions. And five, we're going to do the battle. So, first, valued viewer feedback. From our latest Naval Battle 72 Bravo, improved 2025 UK Carrier Group versus 2025 Chinese Carrier Group. I've set up a task force of C-sharp programmers to help us implement some of the new technology we've added to game to help share with you guys. Here it is, ba ba ba, my new C-sharp programmer list and you can see the guys in there. They're going to help us bring this technology to you guys. Next, you guys keep saying we use the F-35 mod, but when you download it at home, it doesn't work for you. Well, we're just using the same one you use. We use the basic legacy VSN F-35 mod that anyone can download. We change ours. We change the radar cross section. We change the weapons it uses and we change the radars, but it's just the same mod. If it's not working for you, it's either because you don't have the F-15C installed or other Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft that you need in the background and or you may be using Steam. I suggest not using the Steam version and having those F-15 and other aircraft installed for it to work. Next, some of you guys are complaining that in these naval battles we're using infinite human respawns. Now, it's prudent to bear in mind that these battles take a long time to set up. It takes me five or six hours to get all the battle up, balanced and debugged always full of hundreds of bugs and it needs sorting out as well as that my humans spend a lot of time preparing for the battle setting up their aircraft and setting up the mods and stuff they have to do so i need to give them an hour's worth of flying i can't just give them five minutes one life which would be technically more realistic but they would just stop turning up i need them to have a good time so human respawns are something i think we should keep as well as that just watching ai can get very boring AI is not real AI in DCS, it's just some very simple subroutines that the planes follow. Humans can be much more interesting, so it's why I think we should keep our humans. Next, Meteor. Meteor had its first real tryout in this battle here versus the Chinese, and you guys were disappointed. We fired about 200 of them, and only about 25% of those actually took out Chinese fighters. The three main feedback points I got from you guys were, where's? I was firing them from the F-35 at their maximum firing range of about 100 miles. Because of this, the kill rate was quite low. You guys said we should change that. Instead of firing at maximum range, we should fire it at lethal range, about half the distance, so about 50 miles. That would increase PK, probability of kill, from 25% to much more near 100%. And because they're stealth aircraft, they could do this. They could actually get closer without being seen by the Chinese. It's a really good idea. I didn't think about it. Uh, and it is probably how we should operate with stealth in the future. So I've listened to that. And we'll try that in the future. And hopefully it will increase the PK of the Meteor. Next, target deconfliction. If you remember, the stealth fighters were chucking out vast numbers, about 200 Meteor missiles onto the targets. Now, the one major problem we've got in the way the core game works is a lot of those missiles will be going for the same target. Let's say you've got eight F-35s, they all fire a missile, and they all may fire a missile on the same target. When that first target is hit by the first missile, the rest of those seven missiles then just go dumb and stop tracking. In real life, a meteor can probably then realize the target's been shot down and find a new target. In-game, we do not have that technology, 
I'm afraid I don't have any way of solving that at the moment. So non-intelligent target deconfliction is a problem we're going to continue to have. Finally, again relating to the PK of our meteor, you guys say that the real meteor, and of course you're right, has variable thrust in that it can fire, get up to speed, and then cruise for a long time, and then when it gets near its target, it can turn its thrust up again, go really fast, making it much more difficult to dodge, therefore increasing the PK. I would love to model that in DCS. At the moment, I can't. At the moment, I've got it set up the same as a PL-15, i.e. two rocket motors, an initial impulse motor, and then a sustainer motor. Then it cuts, then it just glides. I would love to find a solution. In fact, why don't I very quickly show you the flight model of our Meteor at the moment. It's pretty much the same as our PL-15 flight model. Here it is here. It looks complex. It's not that complex when you get your teeth into it. It's basically two impulse motors. It's the way DCS missiles work. You've got stage one called Excel and stage two called March. Excel is the initial motor. March is the impulse motor. You can see the way I've set it up here is 16 seconds of acceleration motor followed by 60 seconds of sustainer motor. Seven and a half thousand newtons for accelerator, 2000 newtons for March. After that, it just glides. Now, what we could do with the Meteor is just increase the acceleration here in terms of seconds and reduce the impulse to still allow it up to about Mach 4, Mach 4.5, then allow it to glide and then switch on the march when it gets nearer the target. We can have a high impulse motor as a march. Now, the problem is this is a static declaration. So this is declared as we start the DCS executable up. That means that all these times here relate to when the missile is fired. So when you fire the missile, this triggers, and then as soon as this stops, then the march triggers. We need a way of turning this from a static declaration and adding the march as a variable. We need to grab into the core game and find what the current dynamic distance between the missile and the target is, and then triggering the march as a variable. That will allow us then to trigger the march as the final impulse of the missile, speeding it up at the end of its glide and increasing PK. I don't know how to do that and I'm not even sure it's possible. I'm going to hand that over to my C developers now and see if they can find a way around that. That would be my solution to Meteor. Sorry for the nerdiness, but that's where we're going at the moment. That is today's viewer feedback. Thank you for the feedback. Next, battle details. And this is going to be super cool because we've got a bunch of new tech to show off to you guys, which is always exciting. So 200 miles between carrier groups. So let's start with Russia, shall we? They've got their Kuznetsov. It's currently in dock, and that's because it's being refitted for its 2025 squadron of MiG-29Ks. And the question I said at the beginning was, is it still going ahead, bearing in mind the war in Ukraine and the drag on resources? And the answer is, I don't suppose anyone really knows. But again, I'm going to assume that it is. Her squadron is going to be her maximum loadout of 24 MiG-29Ks. I've created a MiG-29K for today and we'll go through the details of that in a minute. It's using MiG-29S as a base. 24 all AI max skill level armed with the GR built R77-1 long range missiles with a range of 70 nautical miles and a fuel tank and of course the MiG-29K sexy livery. Their orders are to launch a maximum range. They're not stealthy, obviously, so they want to keep the hostiles as far as away as they can. Also, when they run out of long-range missiles, they're going to RTB and try and land. Next, escort vessels. This year, the Moskva was sunk. The Moskva is one of Russia's three Slava-class attack cruisers, so she still has two left, and we've put those two in today. And this brings up a really interesting point. So why did the Moskva sink? The Moskva sunk, obviously, because she's a 40-year-old vessel, she hasn't been maintained very well, and half of her systems just didn't work. And that is a huge difference between real life and this sim or this game. Everything in this game, despite its age, is assumed that it's just come out of the factory and is 100% operational. Even the World War II stuff is assumed as perfectly working. As well as that, it's assumed that everything works perfectly to publicly available figures. Again, that's why we've seen some discrepancies between S400 SAM site in game and its real life performance. It's just how game has to work. Public figures and everything works perfectly. So, despite the fact these are 40 year old Slava cruisers, they are essentially just out of the factory. Very potent cruisers based around, of course, supersonic, salvoable anti-ship missiles, as we'll see, I'm sure. Next, really importantly, brand new frigate in-game. 
four of them. The new, as of 2018, Admiral Gorshov class frigate. These are super cool vessels. And let's go through their statistics made by Admiral 189 and our friend Current Hill. I'll make the download link for these vessels available and they are freely available. They have short range 14.5mm machine guns modeled. They have 30mm Sea Whiz modeled. They have, really interestingly, the first time in DCS, short range anti ship countermeasures. So it'll be interesting to see how the countermeasures work today. They have Sosnar R short range salmon. You can see the max ranges here in kilometers. They've also got uh, the 9M100, 15 kilometers. They've also got 130mm main gun, which is not going to be used today. Their main defensive system today is going to be the 9M96M, of course, known as the S. 350 and this is really important because it means that as of this point now we have all of the s300 sub series of sams in game including the naval fort series we have the s350 we have the s400 so all we really don't have operational now is the s500 prometheus which is only going to service as we speak anyway in terms of anti land we have a 3m 140 caliber and of course, we have an anti-ship caliber here. Note the ranges, guys, 200 kilometers. We'll talk about that in a minute. And the massive P800 Onyx long range supersonic anti-ship missile, which is great. Note 300 kilometers range. Why am I specifying those ranges? It's because they're actually longer than we have here. Distance between fleets here is about 200 miles, about 400 kilometers. So as it stands, guys, you do not have the range to use these super modern, super potent P800s. So when it comes to moving your vessels and humans will be controlling today's vessels, you've got to plan whether you want to use those missiles or not, whether you want us to stay defensive or let you guys plan that in your teams. Next, humans infinite respawning starting behind a group by 15 miles are oh, of course we've got mig 29 k's today with the same air to air loadout flown by matrix who is also the part time admiral push cannonball violet who i've written as violent here violent violet say hello you four hello you four uh, hello also you've got two AWACSs. you do not we do not have to correct aew aircraft in dcs for the russians so we've given them just a couple of generic us type AWACS and they're going to be very important assets to protect guys so bear that in mind giving the Russians a total of one modernized Kuznetsov two Slava cruisers four frigates Admiral Gorshkov from 2018 24 MiG-29 Ks AI and two AWACS seven ships 26 AI aircraft next let's do the Chinese let's do the overview first of all one CV, their brand new and third aircraft carrier, the Type 003 Fujian, or the closest we can get to it. Six escort destroyers, Type 052C is where we max out in game at the moment. 60 aircraft, the maximum capacity of the Fujian. The first 30 will be air-to-air -air superiority fighters, and the next 30 will be anti-ship. Two AWACS, KJ-600 plus humans, giving a total of seven ships, 62 AI aircraft. We have here a generic CV as our Fujian. I can't wait to get real Fujian in game, but we don't have it at the moment. First 30 aircraft going up are J-15B, obviously everything set to maximum. Everything set to fire at maximum range, as they probably would as they are non-stealthy. And they will RTB once out of long-range missiles rather than just going silly. They are armed with, of course, the premium loadout of Chinese fighters nowadays, PL-15 times 6 and range of about 115 nautical miles. And PL-10s, close range, I think, aim 9 X and then 30 anti shippers, and this is where today's super potent weapons come in. Each can now carry two YJ 12 supersonic anti ship missiles circa 2018. So we've got all the latest world tech at the moment, which is absolutely great to see. We've managed to get it to carry it by messing around a titchy witchy bit with the flight model and reducing the internal fuel to 60%. So it's just going to have enough fuel to get airborne, fire the missiles, turn around and come back really important point at the moment in real life yj-12 anti-ship missiles when fired from an airframe have a range of 250 miles in game they're bugged they ran out of fuel half of that 125 nautical miles i've reported this to core game developers they may or may not fix it either way it's core game and i can't get in there to fix it so they can't fire as soon as they've taken off they're going to have to get to about 140 miles away from the hostile carry here then go in a bit and then fire at 125 nautical miles it's still 
still plenty of range and it should still be plenty effective but that's just one inaccuracy that is the main fleet and then the escort vessels a flotilla of six zero five two c destroyers maxing out hhq9 sams think modernized s300 fort systems out of interest of which are being used today on the slava class cruisers we have of course our four respawning humans as you probably guessed by now in j15s with full air to air loadout and we have two KJ600 AWACSs. That today is the fight, guys. But we've got to move on to our technology demonstrator. We've got to show you what technology we're using today in the air-to-air -air battle. So we've created our own MiG 29K. We've used MiG 29S as a base. We've removed the radar and added a GRA so generic radar. We've removed the legacy missiles and added GR 77 1 missiles with a range of 70 nautical miles. If you want to see the tech, here is what they are currently achieving. We're using the R 77 1 and the PL 15 from China there. The J-15 Bravo, we've removed the weird cheaty radar it had in there and we've added a GRI ESA radar and we've added the GRPL-15 with about 115 miles range as per real life. Next, let's make them fight in air to air to show you exactly what they can achieve just as proof of concept. Here we have a live MiG 29K and here we have a drone J15B. Here we have a live J15B and a drone MiG 29K that set them off. Distances between them are about 110 nautical miles. Speed up. Stop. First missile, PL 15 out at 100 nautical miles. You can fire a little bit further, but you can't force it to do absolute full unless it's in perfect parameters, which he rarely is. And I'm just going to see the MiG-29K. They're set to non-dodge, so they're just going to drone stop there. Sorry, I caught that a bit late. But that's going to get a range of about 67 up to 70 nautical miles. So that's the radar tech and the missile tech that we've got at the moment, which, guys, finally, sorry for all the talking, but there's just so much to talk about. We've got to do predictions. So the Russians have got their carrier, 24 MiG 29Ks, infinite respawning humans, the brand new 2018 frigates, don't write them off, a couple of cruisers, and the Chinese have come in with Fujian, type 052 sea destroyers, these are 14 year old destroyers with 60 fourth gen aircraft including supersonic anti-ship missile 60 of predictions guys what's the russian for toast toasty russian to toasty hmm I'd say this is pretty bold to assume that russia is still going to be a state in 2025 <laughs> Whoa. and that and right. that the admiral kuznetsov hasn't burned down for the seventh time fair point i'm gonna assume it's not for gaming purposes it's gonna be burning down Oof. Am I right in saying that no one's going for, no one's going for Russia? Yeah, I don't think Russia's going to do very well. I'm going to go for Russia, and that's because we've written a Russia off so many times, but they've got some really interesting tech. If Matrix can get those Onyx missiles firing, there's very little that can stop an, an P-800. Also, they're going to be constantly peppering those old Slavas, although we saw they got sunk by you know, like, like a 50,000-pound missile, but still... In game, remember everything's brand new. They're P700 shipwrecks, are really good missiles. Those P500 sandboxes, they're still supersonic missiles, and they rip, they salvo them all off, at the, all off at the right time. So if Matrix can get that right, he's going to plaster the Chinese, and you might even get an early five-minute win. I really don't know. So I haven't run it through. I resisted the urge. Stand by. And welcome into the battle. I hope you're ready for a big boom boom. Before we go, let's just check out the threat rings that I've turned on today. You can see the S350 on the Admiral Gorshchev frigates. It's showing about 80 nautical miles critical threat there, while the HHQ-9s from the Chinese destroyers are showing about 50 there. In reality, there'll be a bit more, about 70 there. So you've got no man's land about that kind of zone. My guys are all set up and ready. We're going to fight in three, two, one, go. I'm going to watch the Russians first. Now, the Russians, when they do naval, they do all out, as you're about to see. Let's go and have a look at modernized Kuznetsov. The way the Russians fight is their anti-ship ability is not in the aircraft like the US or the Chinese. Their anti-ship ability is actually the, the ships themselves. They fire supersonic anti-ship missiles you can see just the look of in fact there they go the slavas are already firing p500 sandboxes massive supersonic cruise missiles that are going to fly 200 miles now and this guy here fires p700 shipwrecks the carrier and that's how the russian uh, anti-carrier group carrier group is designed to operate everything here is designed to kill 
US carriers. And that's why it's always so entertaining. Look how I can salvo them all up and guide them all at once as well. The Gorzhkovs are also designed to kill carriers. They've got P800 Onyx, I think Brahmos missile, but they don't have the range. They've only got 350 kilometers. These guys here have got a huge range of like 500 miles. Tell me that isn't an impressive piece of warfare, viewers. Look at that. They mean real business. The only bad thing is now they've shot all of their cruise missiles off. They've now just got defensive missiles. Here go the first MiG-29K. Pretty sexy looking plane, right? Now here's a problem. The MiG-29Ks can only operate from this catapult here. Uh, not catapult, station. They cannot operate from these stations at the front here. They don't have the power to weight ratio or whatever it is they need to get airborne. So because of that, they're going to have a slow operational rate and there's not much we can do about it. Look at Simba's vessels go. Not Simba, Matrix's vessels go. Sending them off. Right, let's go and have a look, look at the Chinese. 200 miles away. Okay, we don't have Fujian. This is an American CV. It's got four steam catapults rather than three electromagnetic catapults, but that's the best we've got. Uh, here are her flotilla of six 052C destroyers from 2007, I think. Uh, Simba is not in range to fire yet. They've got a range of about 350 kilometers, so they're about 50 kilometers out of firing range. And their first flight have gone up. Let's look at some airframes. So apart from the sand boxes and the shipwrecks, there are no missiles up. Violet is up in the MiG-29. Note, I've given the humans different liveries so you can detect which are human and which are AI. Okay, we've got Grump down here. Hello, Grump, with his lovely white nose cone. Anyhow. Air to air. We've got Drop. Drop's a new guy. Uh, he's fitting in with us. Hello, Drop. Hello. He hasn't done anything really stupid yet, but uh, as I always say, there's still time. I've uh, got the AIs up. I've got Fire Dad here. Woo! Would be proper GR if he dies. Right? Correct attitude, Grump. Simba is still busy being an admiral, and he will spawn in when he needs to. Right! That is the fight. Bullseye is obviously in the middle. Uh, wait for Big Boom Boom. Let's go and watch some supersonic missiles. That's the Sandbox Mark 1.4 with a massive carrier-killing warhead. So today they're firing P500, P700 and P800. I can't see any shipwrecks. No, they're in there somewhere. There's one. Can I help you? Yeah. I think we need to restart because there's nothing taking off from the carrier. Oh, it's okay, Simba. It's the way I phased them in. Oh, no. no it's yeah, good. Yeah, I've designed them to launch every 60 seconds, so it's four minutes before the next four spawn in. Not four. Yes, four minutes. So, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, your front guys are firing, Simba. How about that? Right, they've got within firing range already. They've got these missiles here. Eight uh, YJ-62 long-range anti-ship cruise missiles that range about 350 kilometers. There they go. Annoyingly, they shoot out the side, so you got to be really careful not to have anyone side by side. I'm slightly worried about that guy there at the back, Simba. You've got two side by side. You need to deconflict them. They will actually blow each other up. Uh, right, so they're I'll starting to me how to live my life. I, I know go, what I'm doing. I can only apologize. Fire dad's already fired, and so has drop at break at least 114 nautical miles, possibly even further. The power of the friggin' PL15. Twin jet motor. What a beast. Interestingly, a lot of you have been telling me that this missile isn't what it's made up to be in a way that, because it's a wide body missile, I mean, it gets its range because it's a wide body missile. Because it's a wide body missile, its PK is not going to be as high as something like a Meteor or an A120D because it can't maneuver in it as well in the terminal phase. Think of the problems with the legacy 1970s A54 Phoenix. Big, powerful, fast. It's a wide body, it couldn't maneuver very well. Is that modelled in game at the moment? No. Is it modelable in the game at the moment? Yes. If we can figure out how to, all the parameters are there to allow that PK to reduce because of the wide body. So, two PL15s at huge ranges. Uh, let's have a look at the MiGs. I think that's a very sexy skin. A MiG-29K skin. Nowhere near firing range at the moment. 70 miles max firing range. Technically, they can overblow shots on purpose, but they get super unreliable when you do that. Okay, the first AI guys are firing at 95 nautical miles. That's about as much as we'll get out of an AI at the moment. They just don't like firing at the maximum, maximum range. 
Look at that. Smashing these into orbit. First of all, cruise missiles. These are subsonic cruise missiles, relatively old, long-range subsonic cruise missiles. Very different to the Russians. Supersonic. Old. These are all 40 years old, but... Wow, look at this guy here. Who took that shot there? What a freaking hero. That was a 115 mile shot on that person there that's about to hit. And that person almost certainly is not going to get a warning until that happens. It's gone pitbull, it's gone active. Look at it surf. It's so high, 70,000 feet, that it's struggling to get any uh, grip on the air. But it is going to do it. Look how it has to fly sideways. Because it flies sideways, it makes it a lot slower. Is it going to trap? I think it is. Violet's seen it. Can she notch it? Well, she has to turn 90 degrees to it now at this point and beat it kinematically. Can she do that? Here's the problem with the wide body missile, you see. Flying through the air, it's not going to be as sleek as something like an A120D or a Meteor. I think she's beating it. Oh, has she? I don't know. When it's no stop twitching, you know she's beating it. And she's beating it. Well done, Violet. Give us a flare. That's our Violet. Well done. I would hate to be a MiG right now because... As soon as you're 120 miles away from people, you know you've got missiles after you. Big, potent, fat body missiles. Let's see if AI can dodge it. I'm not sure he can. There's no substitute for the real Violet. AI, not as good. Watch this. Dumped his tank slip. Boom! MiG down. Another MiG about to go down. Here's a problem with AI value viewers. AI in DCS is not real AI. It's not Google AI. It's just a bunch of simple subroutines. And so they'll just go down the middle like this and get pretty much slaughtered. They're not clever like humans, which have brains, which can go out and flank. You can sort of force them out to go and flank, but it doesn't really work. It just messes their programming up. It's best in the long run just to leave them to do what they want to do, which is to go down the path of least resistance, which is right down the middle. That guy's dodge. Well done. Oh, advanced adders. I missed that somehow. Look, advanced adders out. 70 miles. Not as good as the PR-15. Note those big fences at the back there on the R-77-1. It makes them much more draggy. More maneuverable, but more draggy. That said, he might actually get a hit. Is it even guiding? Yes, it is. Oh, MIG down. It's not guiding. I was going for something that's out of bounds. So, so far, I've seen two, three MiG shots. Ah, now, look how close Violet's, Violet's gone major aggressing, but... That's a wide body. She can turn away and go defensive. Her missile will guide on data link. Not aggressive enough. Boom, Violet's down and out. Go and respawn. Oh, sugar. Uh, the things, words and stuff. These guys here, the supersonic cruise missiles are now getting to within break. 21 miles. And look what happens in response to HHQ-9s are going out. These 15-year-old destroyers and they carry these. They're kind of like modernized S-300 fault systems. Better range, better seeker heads. Look at that. They're sending these out to destroy the supersonic cruise missiles. See the front two firing at the moment. What a nice bit of warfare there. Beautiful. And these are going to start raining down on these guys here. Boosh! The PK is relatively low, but again, they fire enough missiles out. They will hit them all eventually. Well, I don't know. Will they? Will they get through? We'll see. This is what Russia is all about. The net Russian naval doctrine. Sending as many supersonic cruise missiles as you can at once. Overwhelming the defences. The problem is the Chinese defences are exquisitely good. Sandbox is oh, getting dangerously close. Still loads coming in. Look how they're overwhelming. Overwhelming the Chinese. Can't get enough HQ. Nines out. Can't deconflict them well enough. Will they get through to the carrier? The seeker heads are going to be programmed to go for the bigger ship out here, which is oh, going to be the carrier.
Well, something died. A ship died. I don't know what it was, but a ship did genuinely get hit. Oh, no, I got hit. Smash! The words, the stuff. They're not firing. Half of the guys aren't firing. Half of the destroyers are not firing. I don't know why. Oh, carrier defended itself. Okay, three. Three destroyers down on that attack. That's pretty good. 40-year-old missiles, but they're really good. And the attack's defeated. Whoa, -ho 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 -ho. Right, well, that changes everything. Simba, is it? Yes, Simba now has three destroyers. This one's probably can fire. Oh, no, it's on fire. It's dead. And now has three cruisers uh, and one carrier. What an initial attempt. The only problem is that is all of the Russian anti-cruise missile uh, missile set. No, it's not, because it's still technically got P-800. And there's one more here for good luck by the looks of it. And it's dead. Gee, I know there's a couple more coming in, but it's legacy. I doubt they'll get very far. That's a real interesting start. Uh, oh! Cap, I think you need to look at the Russians' AWACS status. B -b 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 one Russian AWACS down. Well done. Someone sniped it from 120 miles. Now, that's really important. Really important. Without the Russian AWACS, these guys can no longer fight. They've got another one in reserve. God saw fit to give them another one. But without those Russian AWACS, these missiles cannot guide on data link. That means they have to track their own missiles to target. That's a major problem for the Russians. So amazingly well, someone sniped it. Even more importantly, without the Russian AWACS, the ships can't see the other ships. So they can't fire any anti-ship cruise missiles anymore, which again is a huge problem. So AWACS is always, always the most important asset in any battle. Look, they had another one just to make sure. Ah, P-800. Now, this is really interesting value. I've not actually seen the P-800s fired so far. Our first firing of P-800 Onyx anti-ship missile, supersonic. Think Brahmos cruise missile. The Indians have a version of it. You can run supersonic Mark 1.2 at 32 feet. That makes it an incredibly dangerous missile to fight. It's not stealthy. Instead, it's fast and it's low. There's not a huge amount of them because the Gorshkovs only carry, I think, four. Sorry, we haven't seen much of this guy, but this, the, the battle's just been so intense. So, P-800s now being fired. So you've seen P-500s, you've seen P-700s, and they destroyed half of Simba's fleet. What's going to happen now that P-800s are firing? Also, the YJ-62s are coming in, and more YJ-62s are being fired. Whoosh! I do not see good things for the Chinese coming up. Also, a brand new missile, S-350, for the first time fired in DCS here. Air that is an S-350. It's from Current Hill, so it'll almost certainly be very well programmed. Mark 4 missile, I believe. Range of about 80 miles. They are firing at these guys here. So, the Chinese have pushed the Russians so far back into the Samnet. In fact, they've completely wiped them out. When did all this happen? We've been watching so much anti-ship lately that we haven't seen the complete destruction of the freaking Chinese force. Just so much going on. Look how the Russians have had to pull back within 30 miles of their own carrier network and look what you're gonna see here yeah is s350 can't tell if they're tracking or not yes it's wiggling its little backside that means it's tracking it's that human or an ai probably a human bye bye human s350 in the face whoops press the wrong button <gasps> and breathe uh lots of stuff going on loads of look at this ring of po 15s coming in here's an interesting thing p800 is now merging with yj62 let's see if we can see p800s there they are, you see that? That's a supersonic P-800 Onyx. Look at that. Brilliant stuff. The Chinese are a victim of their own success at the moment. They've won the air battle, but they've now hit the SAM network. They've hit the S-350, as you see here, and they've hit the S-300 F-4 system, which is an older legacy system. And that is not to be sneered at. S-350 is modern, good modern stuff. Uh, what have we got? Let's see how the Air Force is doing. Okay, everything's still operating. Uh, Simba's turned his carrier. I, oh, I don't know. I'm confused and lost. Anyway, it's all operating. Everything's good. Super swap. Boom! S350 in the face. Okay, we've got a twitching white body here. That's a black back mig, I think. Yep. Who's fired something? He's fired. No, maybe he didn't. Man, there's a lot going on right now. Onyx is now 64 miles away from the Chinese carrier group. That is very exciting. Wow, look, a drop. Oh, a thing's happening. A thing! Is he aware of the thing? I think he is. But is the other guy aware of the thing? I don't think he is! Oh, 
he's lost contact. He's lost contact. No. No, still any man's game. Oh, appeal 15 came in from someone else. Smash Campbell. How upsetting for him. But it's this absolute air dominance from China, as you would expect, with over twice the map. Actually, technically, it's only got six more fighters. So only six more fighters, but just better fighters with better missiles. Drops now moving on to his next prey. 20 miles away. Oof, oof, oof. Let's go and have a quick look at the gorge troughs. Beautiful model by Admiral and uh, Current. Look at them in with those old 1980s cruisers. Completely different doctrine of design. Well, I'll say that, but they're still going to ship cruise missiles. Now, loads of stuff's coming out around here. I've got to figure out what's going on. Okay, we've got more YJs merging with more Onyx here. Don't worry, they won't hit each other. They do not have proximity fuses. They have delayed contact fuses. So unless they literally run into each other. Also, remember, Russia only has one AWACS, and he's set further back. That's going to cause problems, and maybe why no more Onyxes are firing, because they haven't got enough AWACS coverage to see line of sight to that guy there. That's something tactical to think about. Are things happening here, though? Have they seen each other? I don't know. Again, it's really easy from God... Drop, are you out of fuel? Yeah. Drop! Fight, you've still got KE. Unfortunate, but again, these don't have infinite fuel. They will run out eventually. I'm afraid this is going to be Violet's bread and butter. There is a missile. An advanced adder out. I've lost sight of it. And it didn't track. Going in for guns. Guns, guns, guns. Woohoo! Violet. Oh, 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 it didn't track. Didn't track. Oh, it was his last missile as well. Valley viewers, I'd love to sit and watch this, but... Oh, I'm tempted to watch it. No, oh, we've got to see the main battle. The P800s are more important. Okay, here we go. P800. I've never seen this fire before, and I've no idea how they're going to do. They are now 15 miles away from the break. Uh, Chinese carrier group. <gasps> Things are done. Do be getting a sighting. That's really important to say that these are fast and they're low. Look how low they are. Remember, those guys over there can only shoot based on the uh, line of sight over the horizon. And that, they are over the horizon at the moment. I know they're not visually, but they are over the horizon. Take my word for it. Will they be able to intercept them? Will these get through to the carrier? Who knows? Russia still has some teeth. Have you won it, Violet? I had to eject. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah. yeah, fair enough, guys. Yep. All right. Well done for staying along so long. Uh, words and stuff. Okay. This guy's got a, a, a guardian there. This guy's guarding the, whoever that guy is, the carrier. Here come in 20 or so Onyx. Supersonic, super low missiles, and they are not going to be fired at. Look at that. They're too fast. They're too low. How interesting. Either that or he's out of missiles, but I doubt he's out of missiles. This is unexpected to say that. Yes, he's firing. He can see him. He's firing Sea Whiz, and he's, and he's missed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you a freaking P800 Onyx. Wow. This is a freaking game. Oh, it's lost a lot. It's lost a lot. Oh, None of them are going for the carrier. Ah, oh, I turned around. Look at that. Is it because these guys have lost their AWACS? I wonder. Or is it the superior naval skills? Maybe. Almost certainly, it's something... What it was, I'll tell you exactly what it was, valued viewers, because I've been studying this a bit myself, and so is Simba. They were tasked to go for a ship, okay? And they will get constant updates on that ship. But the thing that could see those ships is that AWACS there. It's got line of sight. That AWACS there has now been shot. This one's too far away, so they haven't seen the ship, and it's moved. I guarantee that is where the carrier was when those missiles were shot, or when the AWACS was shot down. So China has completely nullified the P-800 by whichever brave soul shot down the AWACS. Who shot down the AWACS? Who gets the friggin' medal? I don't know. I think it was an AI. Oh, all right. Well done, AI. AI best brain. How it's about that? Shows how important AWACS destruction is, guys. Cruise missiles can no longer guide without a without AWACS support. Look at all these PL-15s coming out from the latest batch of Chinese. In fact, I should see, how, are there anti-ship out yet? No, combat air control still going out. There's 30 of them to get out. And how many MiGs have we got left? Have we still got MiGs on the carrier? Yes, we do. We're not, we've not exhausted our supply yet. Okay, S-350 now coming and shooting down the subsonic and pretty easy to hit. YJ-62. He's only flat 4 or 50 knots. Speed is everything in cruise missiles. You've got to have speed or stealth, like with the American Lorazm. These do not have stealth, so they need speed. Instead, they just have nothing. What they do have is somebody who's just freaking buzzed us. There's a, there's a black back there. No, it's a human. Oh, well, the human just got hit by a PL-15. Yeah. Ooh, awkward. We better not mention that. Uh, right, okay, yeah, the... 
I think, guys, the 350, the S350 is going to shoot down this, this YJ62s. But Nagorshkovs, that's these guys here. Again, I keep apologizing. I'm not showing them very much, but there's so much to come. These are their BLS based systems, obviously. It's a you know brand new uh, frigate, pretty much. They don't actually carry that many missiles, but which missiles they do carry are good. You've got your 350, you've got your Onyx, and so on. We haven't watched much Adder action, but you've got an Adder going out from a 29k Blackback. Wow, look at these S350s. Look how far they've gone. I am a fan of S350. Now I've seen it. Look at all these PL15s coming in. Right? That's going to be ugly. Someone's going to get hit. Black Bat's about to get smacked. Boom! Utter air dominance from the Chinese. Same radar in DCS at least. Same radar. Better missiles. These missiles go 35 miles, 45 miles further than these missiles here. It makes a huge difference. Another Black Bat. Smash. Oh, Russian air is destroyed apart from Poosh, basically, who's getting chased by a wide body. <laughs> run, Poosh! Freaking run! The old legacy YJ-62s were nothing. So all anti-ship is nullified, but don't forget the Chinese have a full squadron of 30 anti-shippers with supersonic YJ-12s. That's yet to take off, so lots of excitement coming. We are 24 minutes into the game so far. Wowee, it's gone quick. Poor old Violet. Oh, wrong place, wrong friggin' time. She caught a legacy PL-15. Unlucky Violet. That was shot right over the battle. That was a blue on blue. She killed Poosh. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, that was a Sorry, Poosh. Things will happen. Unfortunately, they're already pushed into a corner, and when you push a line into a corner, it lashes out and break. Not Cortana. Violet is a lion. Welcome to GR. Welcome to GR. Can't remember anyone's friggin' name anymore. Oh, look at the dominance. The dominance of the Chinese. They've lost half their ships, but their anti air is just smashing. The Russians can't even get off their carrier now. They're getting destroyed 10 miles away from their carrier. That is what we call air superiority, air dominance. Where is he? Yeah, no kidding. I think they are spawn camping the uh, Pretty much. blue players now. Oh, chase him. The wide body chase him into the water. I feel so sorry for the Russians. It's not all over yet because they've still got the Admiral Gorshov. So although these guys can sit and snipe, they will eventually run out of missiles. And they can't get within 50 miles of those Gorshkovs. Look, they're trying to get within 50 miles, but then the S-350s come out. And the other thing is they still have him, the secondary AWACS. because it can't see the ships, but it can see the main battlefield. So it is feeding them a good amount of information. But I haven't said it already. The guys can see on the F10 map, which is this, what they can what the AWACS can see. So they can see what their AWACS can see. Look at the dominance. The dominance. Grumbles out for the first time today. It's the first time we've seen Grumbles. Old oh, 80s missiles being fired, uh, known as S400 fort systems. S300 F4 systems. That means only one thing, and that means the Chinese are getting close. Who's close? It must be you, sir. Yes, it is. Vidad's got a bunch of Grumbles on him. Don't write them off. Remember, the game doesn't play them as 40-year-old. It plays them as brand new. Link with that, you got a bunch of these, S350. Oh no, more Grumbles. <gasps> I think the Gorshkovs may have run out of S350s because the Grumbles are coming out, and the Grumbles are coming out of the Slava-class cruisers. I think Gorshkovs are out. It's the only problem with frigates. They're lightweight. They don't carry that many missiles. Oh, look at that. That's a carrier. That's a AWACS killer on its way. 40,000 feet, 900 knots. Will it get there? If it does, that is game over for freaking Russia. The second to last group of Chinese cap is up. One more group, and then the anti-ship has come out. And then everything's going to change again. Look, the Russians have pushed way back past their own cruiser screen. Their own cruise frigates. These Gorshkovs, as good as they are, are now out of ammo and useless. It's now the Grum... Uh, Slavas that are defending with their fort systems. And that smacks of desperation, valued viewers. Fido's beaten that. Got an advanced adder going out. It's got some legs on it too. Imagine how hard it is for these human pilots. They don't see any of this stuff that we see. They just get a beep five seconds before they're hit by the missile, and then they have to defend, which is exactly what Fido's done there. Oh, uh, uh, oh no! Oh no, Russia! Hero Soviet Union fire dad just shot down the last AWACS on the Russian side! They're now blind! They can now no longer populate their screens other than with their own radars. They can no longer guide in any anti any cruise missiles. Which doesn't matter because they've run out anyway. So I'm not actually sure it makes a massive difference anyway. Such a complex battle. Look at the shift of power there, valued viewers. Really is quite amazing stuff. And just say, the last AI MiG 29K is going up at 29 minutes in. Good luck. No, he's not. He's parking. He's landed. Why did he freaking land? He's not out of ammo. He must have run out of fuel. He's run out of fuel and he's landed. Or oh, he's deserting. Either way, he's not freaking fighting. <laughs> Russia. 
No he more like, oh, crap, He didn't like that. Right, he does not want to fight Grum. Uh, right. Oh, YJs are coming in. Now, here's really interesting. Because the Gorshkovs are out of ammo, the YJs are coming in. Can they be stopped? The terrible, terrible old missiles. But can they be stopped? I think Legacy American Harpoon. I don't think Russia's got anything left. They can't see them because the AWAX is down. Oh, yes, they can. Something's firing. Yeah, it's these things that I can't seem to get a good look at. There, that's what it is. Huh. That's... I'm not sure what it is. It's something I don't know. Closing defense is still working. Five miles closing defense is still working from the Gorshkov. So they've still got low range missiles and they'll probably carry quite a few of them. Look at those explosions. Those are legacy missiles that have not deconflicted. Deconfliction is a massive problem in Medesius at the moment. It's not as good as it is in real life with Aegis and equivalent. And we don't have a solution for it at the moment. Wow, shot. Yep. Yep. I am launching my game enders. The game enders are launching. Let me go look. I give you twin mounted YJ 12 missiles. We're about to empty out the fuel and remove bits of the airframe, but they can carry now two of them. That is 60 YJ 12s on their freaking way. Never been seen before. This is going to be interesting, and I feel for Russia now. They've been worn down and worn down and smashed and grabbed and punched and kicked, and they're now down to five mile range missiles. You've got to feel for them, guys. Don't save you. Okay, I mean, I mean finally drop smash. I mean, look, the, the 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 furthest in Russian is now ten miles behind their own freaking cruiser screen. That shows how dominating these PL15s and these uh, Chinese have been today. And they can't even see they're in the blind because they got no freaking AWACS. Poor old Poosh is dancing with a wide body. Look at him dance with a wide body. Go on, Poosh. Everyone wants to see you do well. Good turn. He's got it can't even get to his own freaking cruiser screen because he just gets smashed by PL-15s. Violet being aggressive as ever, smashing out advanced adders. Man, I got such a bad sore throat. But that's okay, we're gonna keep shouting. More legacy YJs out, probably won't do any damage, but you never know. All AI are down now, it's just my respawning humans now. And to be honest, they're not very effective because they can't even get really missiles out before they die. Gotta feel sorry for them as Violet, Matrix, Cannonball and Poosh. That said, doesn't stop Violet. Plowing missiles out. Russian cruiser screen. What they're doing is they're pushing the cruiser screen forward. They're trying to they're trying to make a break so that they can get through the Chinese. But obviously the 30 knots, you know, it takes it takes all day. And the thing about this is Violet's missiles will no longer self-guide. The Russians have got to start thinking smart. Because the data link's gone, these missiles are just going to go dumb now. They're not going to track. So you've got to actually think about keeping a uh, track. That's a human. Ah, oh, got it. Oh, what am I looking at? Oh, look, it really is the last line of defense right now. But Admiral Gorshov has got a last line of defense. Look how close they're getting. His YJs are five miles away from the cruiser screen. Look at those humans getting shot down. Big sexy. Big sexy. No Man's Land is now 50 miles. So still, these 40-year-old uh, Slavas are still keeping the Chinese at bay. S-300 Fort still... Still viable weapon. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Ooh, poor old cannibal. Humans are basically just respawn, die, respawn, die, respawn, die, respawn, die now. Let's see how close the anti shippers in. End of days coming, guys. Anti shippers are coming in. Now, what would they shoot at? I asked them to shoot the carrier, but if you know anything about DCS, AI never listens to what you say. So we'll see. From the carrier, there are 135. They're almost within firing range. These guys are RTB, presumably. Yep, once they fire the missiles, they no longer go dumb. They're now RTB. As you guys, the valued viewers wanted. The valued viewers get what the valued viewers freaking want. Those are the anti shippers going to combat. And this guy, RTBs. Very nice stuff. They will actually go land on the carrier as well. I might be able to show you, I might not. That guy's taking off. Look at him try and take off with this giant payload. Well done, young man. Like I said, we had to remove some guidance stuff and some fuel from it, but we managed to get it to fly with those big missiles on. It's just not fair to the poor uh I mean, Rhino, Russian. right? It really is swatting. The, the PL-15s are, are in the air before they even spawn in. I know. <laughs> they lock it off. <laughs> <laughs> it's so horrible watching. They just I just see, like, Cannibal spawn in, and he spawns in, he's got a bunch of PL-15s guiding on him that were fired, like, ten minutes ago. Oh, it should be within firing range. Now, I can't tell them exactly when to fire. They will choose exactly when they fire. Let's hold out. YJ's out. End of days has just happened, guys. 
the way China works now with their modern missiles, these are circa 2018, they don't have stealth missiles, well, not really, but they, they have in pl plentiful supply air launch YJ-12 supersonic missiles. Now watch this. These go fast, 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 and they burn for ages, ages, ages. They've got up to Mark four, I think, in the end there, and slam into the carrier, almost hypersonic. They rely on going really fast and diving down to kill their target. Opposite to AGM-158C, uh, Lorazm A, which is based on stealth. So it's interesting, the different doctrines. Again, China, go, uh, Russia goes for pure brute power as well. You saw Onyx already today. Ah, poor old Matrix, poor old Cannonball. I don't know what to suggest for them, guys. I've got no useful help for you. There's not much you can do to avoid big loitering missiles like this. If anything, your pain will soon be over because the YJs are 100% on their way. Look at that. And look how fast they're coming in. 2,000 knots already, and they'll just keep speeding up. Look at Violet. Violet knows she's, you know, going to die, so she just chucks all six missiles out at once. Probably not going to do anything, but... Poor old Violet. I want another eight out. Yep. This is game over, guys. No, they're they're heading... They're heading north of the cruiser stream. Grumbles are out to hit the YJ-12. Can a 1980s... Fort Grumble take on a YJ-12 supersonic 2018 Chinese missile. The question is, do they have enough Grumbles to take on the... Uh... Never and tested. Never tested. Oh, yes, is the answer. How about that? Now, what's the PK? PK is actually pretty good. China, Russia, OP, question mark? Look at that. Smashed. Huh. But have they just run out? Have they just shown their hand and have they run out? They've run out. Moscow's Slavs are out. No, they're not. Scratch that. They've got low. They've got, they've got, you see those cells there? Each one of those is a fort. Hang on, I'm lost now. These things move so fast. There's a YJ Ooh. right there. Can I... They got uh, hit. They all got yeah. hit. Go on. Yep. Right, so... S-304 from the 1980s can take down YJ-12. Uh, uh, can. Two on the way. Roger, tell me when they're danger close. I'm just watching the Oh, they're danger close. Ah, damn it. Right, another eight on their way. Four to up again. Look at that. Will they ever run out? Oh, hang on. Admiral uh, Gorshkov at the north has been hit on mine. Gorshkov's been hit. It took a, it's taken a thousand pound warhead. Right. Yeah, I must have missed that somehow. Right, so they're not going for the carrier sim, but they are going for the cruiser screen. That's interesting. Oh, that's a reprieve for the Russians, but I don't think it's really going to help them. Their entire air wing's destroyed. This one's going for the carrier. This one's going for a carrier. Speed of the damn thing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're coming in at Mark 4! Boom! Oh, that's a Gorshkov down. Two Gorshkovs down, smashing the cruiser screen. I wish they would just go for the freaking carrier like I asked, but now have the Slavas got any more missiles? Yes, they have, because they're still firing. Or have they? I don't know, I'm confused. Look at that. Well, I did tell you today is going to be full of boom boom. Oh, that's such a sort of freaking throw. Up they go again. This can track, I think, four targets each, or maybe it's six or eight. Oh, I can't remember. Technology's hard to keep up with. Look at that, viewers. Have you ever seen a more majestic sight? But the Russian, the Chinese are going to keep going. They fired 40 missiles. There are 40 missiles in the air now, guys. One excellent, excellent battle, guys. I know poor Russians are having a hard time of it, but you're missing some. That's going for the carrier, Simba. I'm watching its trajectory. That's going for the carrier. Finally doing what they're told. See, look, there is the trajectory for them. The carrier is over there. There's the carrier. Uh oh. Uh-oh, Slavas is firing. Can they stop enough of them? We're 44 minutes into the battle. No, they're turning. Why do they keep doing that? That's really frustrating, Humanoid. Again, this is core game coding. I can't get in there here to fix this stuff. They've all gone for a sunk vessel. Nothing I can do about it. I can whinge, I can moan. Will they ever fix it? Probably not. I can't believe those suckers aren't out of friggin' forts yet. What is up with that? There are only so many of they've got. You can see them right there, look. They can't reload, by the way. They can only reload a port. Ooh, could that be out? Could they be out? Yes, they are. They're out. 
Oh, and I knew him out because Chop's right freaking on top of him. He's doing a thing. He's been wasting their missiles. It's called wild weaseling. He's been getting them to fire their missiles all this time. And now they finally need their missiles to defend. Boom. They got nothing left to use. Oh, look at that. He ended up getting shot down by his own PL-15. Oh, his AI shot him down. Drop, how does it feel? Bittersweet. Huh? Welcome to Grim Reapers is all I can say. He flew right in front of my trajectory, so he got hit by my missile. Yeah, whatever. He, he's done his work. Uh-oh. I have to ask, Grump, who are you shooting at? Uh, the Kassanov. With a surface, or an air-to-air -air missile? Yep. Because they're gonna be like, oh, what's coming at us? Another oh. Gorshkov down, another yeah. Gorshkov down. Yeah. Well done, Simba. Smashing through their friggin' fleet like sons of bitches. And here come another four. That's 45, no, one, two, three, four. That's 45 so far. Here come another uh, eight. It'll still be a Chinese win. The Chinese have still got their air wing. Look at that. You see that? That's the Chinese air wing all going home. Although they've lost half their cruisers, they're a perfectly viable fighting force. Russia has lost all of its air wing. It's, and it uses missiles up. It's now sitting a sitting duck for a second attack. Oh, and here's a bunch more. Look, look at that. All come out. That's 32 missiles in the air, if my maths is right. Next batch of missiles going in. Boomy, boomy, boomy. They're definitely going on the vector for the carrier where I set them. It seems like at some point they detect their own target. You see them bend? See it bends and turns. That appears to be the way it works. It detects its own target. Which, to be honest, is, is the way probably the real missile would work, I think. I don't know. You let me know. You guys are smarter than me. Borshkov down. Borshkov down. There is a two ship at Utah Echo that will need an escort. Oh, Matrix. He tries so hard. Not a great deal Drip. we can do there. You see, they're on the look. If I make that vector 077, that is the vector for there. It's not the vector for there. So they are going for the carrier, but they see these guys at the last minute bend and go round for them. Well, probably like the harpoon, though, you'd say size of target mm -hmm. and when to go active. Right. Unfortunately, you'd delay it. Unfortunately, we've got no way of doing that. Smash. Oh, they've all gone for a dead gorge shop that's already sunk. Bloody video game. Stop it. I really get on my nuts. At Utah Echo 96, there is a two ship. Oh, I'm gonna have a look in a minute. First, I need to see this. No, they've all gone for the wrong one again. Man, that drives me. There's not even anything there to lock onto. Fix your code. Utah. Uh, we actually say uniform in Britain. Uh, uniform Echo. We say uniform in the US too. Embarrassing, Simba. Uh, uniform Echo. Well done, Simba. Simba did a thing. Yeah, but I didn't get him at the angle that I wanted. I see what Simba was trying to do. He was trying to get him round here to bend the missile around there. Uh, it's actually a good idea. Guys, look at the circuit around the carrier. Busiest circuit in the history of anything. I wish them all ran out of fuel now. And there's a whole bunch more coming to add to that circuit. Winner is China because they've still got a full air wing. They probably lost about 10 planes in that. I saw most of them RTB. They lost half their cruiser screen, but they're fully operational with a, otherwise a fully operational air wing. Russia have lost half their cruiser fleet. They've got a fully operational thing, but they've got no planes. So what would happen in real life now is, and in two hours time, the Chinese would take off against once, once reloaded and just smash the rest of it down. Obviously, we're not going to simulate that because it's completely pointless. Good fight though, guys. We might as well debrief now. Uh, oh, I feel so sorry for the Russians, but how did what did it feel like from you guys? Felt like a prison shower. Oh, and so many, you had so many ups and downs as well, because so many times you nearly hit their carrier. Your Onyxes nearly went for the carrier, but you lost the AWACS at the last second. And then the uh, the old 80s cruise missiles nearly hit the carrier as well. Simba jumped in at the last minute to get the Sea Wizards firing. It just, just saved the carrier. So you guys actually almost won this by the skin of your teeth, but done then... Once that was over, the Chinese just wore you down through pure attrition. China, what was it like for you guys other than shooting fish in a barrel? Uh, it my, was... My plane had canard. Yeah, it was easy pickings. It was almost... Okay. I, I felt sorry for the Russians. You had a hard fight last time. You were against the British with stealth planes, so... Uh, it's about time you had something that was easy to shoot down. Yeah, yeah. last week's felt... I, I can totally uh, sympathize with the Russians today. Watch out, the next battle is uh, we're going to bring the Americans back in with their La Razum. Okay, look, it's, uh, sla it's going to kill the Slava. Boosh, 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 boosh. How much damage does that do out of interest? The Slavas are big tonnage, half killed her. Uh, 
That's the end, guys. I'm pausing the server now. Well played, everyone. You did the best you could in almost impossible scenario. The Chinese just won it. They won the air war because of better technology. They did the same amount of damage of the ship war. Uh, there are lots of buggy missiles and stuff. Again, it's all core cool game. There's nothing we can get to fix it, so it is what it is. But the battle was won because they shot the, the air arm down and they saved their own air arm. We had some close shots at the Chinese, but nothing else. Yeah, their PL-15s give them a massive advantage. I can tell you it's a 45-mile advantage, actually. Yeah, yeah, that was decisive. Right, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you later.